the biggest problem of man is the mind and there lies the greatest solution in other words you must change your mind in order to accept the gospel you must change your mind let me say this to you as beautiful as you are as handsome as you look there is a device there is a system that organizes your behaviors there is a system not visible to the human eyes it cannot be touched yet it is the source of all your actions and that system is called the mind the mind and the purpose of the gospel is not to change your living standard is to change your spiritual standing number one and to reconfigure your mentality to suit the standards of the kingdom whenever you are supposed to get into a new system there is a requirement for repentance repentance here doesn't mean change your way of life it means change your way of thinking because your thought pattern will always largely affect your behavioral pattern so the way people behave is based on the way they think your mindset determines your life set so repentance first of all largely spiritual then it cuts across the mind then it cuts across the body so genuine repentance that happens in the body but has not been able to coordinate the spirit and the mind is not yet genuine repentance it is an action that we soon lose relevance there are people who began well there are people who can be taught to pray there are people who can be taught to fast but until there is a genuine repentance it's just a matter of time you will soon give up on those activities you go through the process of transformation there is a transition from one way of behavior to another and so the purpose of the gospel is not to gather men and entertain them the purpose of the gospel is to transition men from the realm of men to the realm of the spirit is to transition men from mortal dimensions to immortal possibilities the purpose of the gospel is not to excite us is to transition our state of mind our state of spirit and consequently the state of our bodies Jesus answered and said verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God who is he talking to he's speaking to a rabbi Nicodemus was a rabbi and a rabbi simply means that you've been able to pass through all the systems and the protocols of the education of the Jewish people in other words you have a mastery of the law you know the oracles of tradition and you understand the different dispensations from the Old Testament to present day reality these are people who have studied the cultures of Jews who have studied the doctrines the dogmas and the behaviors to be a rabbi it means you have studied and you were equipped with knowledge and you have been installed with the style the lifestyle and the character of the Jewish tradition so a master is not just a title it's not a document affiliation to be a rabbi means you have gone through all of the necessary educational values that makes you to stand to qualify as a teacher in other words for you to be able to be called a rabbi it means you know the law to your fingertips these are men that know the penal code of heaven these are men who understand the constitutions of eternity these are people who hold on to the traditions of their fathers they can tell you when this happened and when that happened these are keepers of the oracles of men they are called rabbi Jesus was a rabbi himself so who is he telling to be born again I want to teach you something that will help all of us Jesus did not tell Peter to be born again. Jesus did not tell James and John to be born again. Why is he telling a religious person to be born again? This is a man who is not a student but a teacher which means he has graduated from the place of receiving lectures to becoming the one that gives lectures and one of the requirements to be a teacher is that you are first of all a doer and a beneficiary of the things you want to disperse to men which means to say I cannot teach on a mystery unless I've been able to validate the full dynamics of that mystery. So if Nicodemus is a teacher, it means he's no longer a normal member in church. Yet Jesus says unless a man be born again, which means being born again is not for unbelievers. It's for people who have taken Christianity religiously and have never been able to attract the life of it. 
born again one of the components of being born again is what I call repentance which is the transition of the mind from mortal dimensions to spiritual dimensions are we together at all unless a man be born again he cannot see now see it is the enter first see see means you cannot behold unless you change not unless you belong to a church first because there are people who take Christianity religiously. Are you aware? People think that the opposite of being a Muslim is being a Christian. People think that because they're not Muslim, they're Christians. In fact, all of the ungodly artists I now know is through the status of Christians. All of the ungodly artists that post perversion is Christians that comment on that. They are Christians because they're born in a Christian family. But their mind has not changed. The word repent means change your mind. It doesn't matter what you do. Take a man from Cameroon to the US. If his mindset remains like the Cameroonian mindset, he will produce Cameroon in America. Take a man from America to Cameroon, he will produce America in Cameroon. So, the societal pattern of men is directly related to the thought pattern of the inhabitants of that society am i speaking to somebody here there are people here who cannot see god they cannot see dimensions of god because they are not born again nicodemus said no man can do these things unless god be with him he said don't look for the result look at the formula the source of the things i do is the thing i have seen i have seen the kingdom i've even experienced the kingdom so don't try to do what i do try to get into the formula that confirms got me to become what you are admiring so behind a woman that can prophesy at the element she saw in the kingdom behind a man that can make the limb to walk he saw something in the kingdom so don't look for result look for formulas and the eternal formula in this kingdom is to be born again born again gives you the license to be able to get into the place where formulas are distributed for matchless dimensions are you aware that many pastors are not born again? Yes. Many musicians are not born again. Many members are not born again. They are just born. Their parents gave birth to them. But the system that turns a caterpillar to a butterfly, they have refused to go through that metamorphosis. He answered, very, very lesson today. Except man be born of water and the spirit. Many people are not born of water. And there are many revelations across baptism. I don't know what you have as a revelation. The Bible says the people were baptized in Moses' baptism. When they passed through the Red Sea, that was baptism. It wasn't a miracle. The purpose for the water dividing was baptism because baptism means baptizo, which means to be temporarily buried into something. So, when they left Egypt, the first thing God did was to baptize them. Baptism was a confirmation that they have transited from a demonic kingdom to a godly kingdom. But they baptized. Their bodies were wet, but their mind remained the same. So, baptism becomes another kind of swimming when you are not born again from your mind to your spirit. That was baptism, my friends. You cannot see the kingdom of God is not a place. It's an institution, it's a spirit, it's a protocol, it's a set of codes coordinated towards the proper manifestation of the fullness of God's will on earth. Bible says thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, which means there's a kingdom that comes and that kingdom is called the kingdom of God. It's a spirit. Take us to verse 5. So first of all, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Next thing, you cannot enter. There are things they don't know because they have not repented. He cannot enter. The word enter here, it means to literally get into the system. 